Hey, Jeremy Cook here, and today I'm going to be showing off my huge automated workbench. The workbench is seven feet long by three and a half feet wide, and it's got storage on the bottom as well as on the top. On the top, you've got plenty of space for my Harbor Freight storage cases, which I've enhanced with 3D printed, 3D printed dividers. So, so these dividers help you store even more stuff in here than you would than you would normally. I've also got this actuated snake type camera holder, so if you want an overhead shot, you can just get that in position here. This is a laser cut. Also got for a, a uh, overhead light right here, so if you need some extra light, turn that on and it blows your camera out. For wires, I've got storage for this. This is laser cut and it holds it nicely via these little tabs that go in there. And you got all kinds of storage for your other, other boxes and everything like that. But besides storage and ample workspace for filming your projects and, and working, you've got different storage for different devices like a soldering iron, heat gun, power supply. You've also got some different things that are automated, like this fume extractor for my soldering squid. And above here, you've got three PIR sensors, one, two, and three, three PIR sensors that can turn the lights on in different zones on these and then you've got some overhead lighting that just is a uh, static lighting. So we'll go ahead and go over that just a little bit more. For my solder squid, the first part was to make a base out of concrete. This is a great material because it's, it's heavy and non-conductive, so seems perfect for this job. I also had a fume extractor on it that was made out of a PC fan and a nine volt battery. In the end though, that would run out of battery sometimes, so I decided to make things a little bit different. This new setup gets power from a micro USB connector. It's got a power switch and a PIR sensor that automatically turns it on and off depending on if somebody's moving in front of it. Presumably, this means you'll be soldering. The PIR sensor sends a signal to the Easy Fan Transistor Breakout Board, which then controls the fan directly. I soldered up a Molex connector to connect the battery and then reinforced this with hot glue. The USB input has a boost converter built in, so you can set it to whatever power level you want. This is great for controlling PC fans, as I'll be doing here, to, for fume extraction. I modified this project box to be able to fit all my electronics in, and once that was done, I used some more hot glue and glued everything up, connected it, and that was, that was it. I then had an automatic fume extraction fan. Here it's helping me solder up a Granduino board which I used on the overhead lighting project. The great thing is, is, is it's got a capacitor built in, so if you use it with WS2812 or other lights like that, you don't have to worry about having to find, find a way to put it on. It's just, it's just built in. It's also got screw terminals, which is good for hooking things up. And in the case of this, instead of one of the screw terminals, I put in two, two buttons for turning the, the power up and down. This worked out really well and it was kind of a kind of a happy coincidence, something I didn't really plan for. To regulate the non-addressable LEDs in this setup, I used an FQP 30NO6L MOSFET. This allowed me to change the perceived light output via PWM from the Arduino. And yeah, I'm just using a little bit of heat shrink there to get it on. I can turn it on and off manually and then using the Granduino board, you can see it draws almost half an amp, just kind of at the outer limits of my easy fan board, so I decided not to use it there. Modified the Granduino just a bit for screwing in to the wood, and then I screwed it in like, like an old school breadboard. This worked really well, and I also attached the, the MOSFET to the, to the 2x4. In an early setup, I just had the non-addressable LEDs, so I could turn that on with one PIR sensor turn it up and down with the buttons. Looks good, and then in the later iteration, the addressable LEDs come on based on which PIR sensor is active. The wire in this setup goes through a, a length of tubing, plastic tubing, and actually getting this all to work correctly meant quite a bit of fishing wires back and forth through this setup. Although this was a lot of work, I think the, the results were, were quite good at the end nice and clean with, with no wires sticking out. Of course, I had to solder up the, the LEDs and look at that, it looks great in red. In theory, it could be any color, but for now it just stays white pretty much all the time when it sees somebody. 
As of now, this project's done, but who knows what will happen in the future. Thanks so much for watching. This is Jeremy Cook, signing off. Well, this is really helpful. In the future, what I'm thinking is that I'll put a stepper, geared stepper motor on it and have it move around a little bit automatically so we can have kind of like a panning shot over some of my, some of my projects. Should be pretty cool.